Hello everyone, Dr. Amy Thompson here, continuing our series of discussions featuring dragonfly migration. Today I thought I would do a little bit of show and tell and show you some of the tools that dragonfly researchers use to do our job. Um, the most important tools we have are nets. So I have two different kinds of nets here to show you. This first one, this is an aerial net, which means we use this to catch the adult dragonflies while they're flying through the air. So we just kind of stand up and we swoop and catch them. And if we get one in our net, we flip it over like this, trap it in. Sometimes people, when they're just beginning to learn how to catch dragonflies, will leave the net open and then peek in and look at it. And then the dragonflies just fly out. So this is a fancy net. Some of the ones that you buy when, um, if you just want an inexpensive one when you're beginning, have a wood handle. But what's nice about these metal handle ones is you can get them in pieces and they break apart. So let's say you're hiking into the woods and you don't want to carry your net the whole time. You can just break it into pieces and then collapse it down and then it can go into your backpack. Like this top part is flexible too, so you can squish it and like kind of jam it into your backpack. So aerial net, one of our most important tools. Now, if you want to study the baby dragonflies, they're underwater, so you need a different kind of net. Like this, this net, mine's a little moldy because I left it out in the rain, but this net is not waterproof. It's not made for going in the water, but this net is made for going in the water. This is just a fishing net. You can get them off any fishing store website or even Amazon or something. But I like this kind of fishing net because it has a metal ridge. So that when I'm using it in the water and I'm scooching it along the bottom or up along some vegetation, that this metal ridge is durable. And then I take it out of the water and I look into it to see if I can find nymphs. And it's super fun to try and figure out which nymphs live where. So which nymphs live in rivers, which live in lakes, which like to be in and among the aquatic plants, which like to be buried in the sediment. So this is a really important tool for studying dragonfly nymphs. Now, another tool, this is a hand lens. And um, we use these dragonfly, people that say dragonflies, odontologists. We use them to look very closely at the adults when we catch them. Some of the dragonfly adults, and actually the nymphs too, can only be identified by looking at these pieces of their body that are very tiny. So in adult dragonflies, it's often the males. They have these reproductive claspers at the tip of their abdomen. And sometimes we also look at their um, reproductive secondary genitalia right behind their wings on their bellies. And to see those shapes, you need a hand lens. You just hold it up to your eye and you bring the bug in and then you can get a really good look at those things. And on the nymphs, we look at things like how many spines do they have on the sides of their bodies. We look at the shape of their labium, which is sort of like a mouth part. Do the spines on it, are they pointy? Are they squared off? We call that being truncate. So this is a really important tool. We usually wear these around our necks and it has a nice little clip that comes off. So if you have it around your neck and you want to take it farther away or share it with a friend, you can clip it off and use it that way and then clip it back on. And then finally, we have some things that we put our specimens that we collect into. One thing we use if we collect aquatic nymphs is we just put them in a, a glass container or a vial. I used to have a bunch of vials and I filled them all up with specimens and so now I just use um, like things from my kitchen, like this is an old cilantro container. So anything that's glass and has a screw tap that's big enough that I can get my fingers into it is, is good for field work. And then last thing I'll show you are if we collect adult dragonflies and we want to keep them, we put them in envelopes. These are um, special dragonfly envelopes. You can buy them from an insect store called BioQuip. And you just slide them in the envelope. And then you want to put it into a container that's strong, that has strong sides so it doesn't get crushed in your pack or something. Um, maybe I'll do a future video about the ethics of collecting because there's a pretty good um, written out ethics and standards about what to collect and when. And um, we can talk about that too because there are some moral issues around collecting living insects, right? Like you want to respect the living things and make sure you're treating it with honor and you're not just collecting it willy nilly, like you have research purpose for it. So that's the tools of the trade. So if you're interested in dragonflies and you want to get started in studying them, I recommend you get an aerial net. You can get them off 
anywhere online. There's an insect store called BioQuip. Um, that's B-I-O-Q-U-I-P.com. Or you can just get them at a hardware store. I've seen those little tiny butterfly nuts at hardware stores all around the country. So this is my um, little update about dragonfly migration research. Show and tell featuring the tools that we use. I will talk to you soon.